Happy Camper Radio starts in three, two, one. one, one, one. Hello, my friends, and welcome back once again to another edition of the Happy Camper Radio Show and a happy 2016 to each and every one of you. I'm Skip. They call me the Happy Camper. And for very good reason, my job, of course, is to make a happy camper out of you. Tell me about your New Year resolution. Have you got one in place? If anything, I hope you will include at least one additional camping trip this year in 2016 take the family someplace go somewhere different go somewhere exciting make a weekend out of it make a whole week out of it if you have to all right but do something different go someplace else other than some of the places you have gone before maybe you've been camping around home maybe somewhere within maybe a 25 mile radius why not go venture out a little bit this year and visit someplace different Add it to your resolution. Make it something you can accomplish in the year 2016. Our phone number here at the Happy Camper Radio Show is 404-537-2267. That's 404-537-CAMP. You can like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker. Add us to Circles on Google+. And now subscribe to our new YouTube channel. We've made it so convenient for you to reach out to us. Go to www.happycamperradio.com. You'll find all of our social media icons right there on the homepage. And speaking of our website, have you been there lately? We have a brand new website design. Check it out. Go there right now. It has a lot of nature to it. It has a lot of nature feel to it. Just go there and check out and see what we've done to the website over the past couple of weeks. I think you're going to enjoy it. Also, check out the, my brand new blog page. You'll find it right in the toolbar in the upper right-hand corner of the, the, the toolbar itself. Skip's blog. Click on it. I'm going to be adding to it. Make sure you subscribe. I'm going to have a lot of information that I'll be posting from time to time, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Always doing something new. Always something exciting here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Let me head over to the shout-out window and welcome some newcomers to the show. First of all, we want to say hello to Mike Fuller, who likes us on Facebook, Evergreen RV in Middlebury, Indiana, Vintage Glamper in Toronto, Canada. They're following us on Twitter this week. To David in Akron, Ohio. And finally, to Mark Olson in South Beloit, Illinois. They've added us to circles this past week on Google+. Thank you all so much for joining us. Glad to have you aboard, and thank you for being a part of this great Happy Camper Radio family. Would you like to be on the program? I'd love to have you. Get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. And for you Google Plus subscribers who have added us to circles on Google+, Plus this coming week, Watch and see if Happy Camper Radio reaches out to you because I'm going to be inviting about 10 people to be on the show next week. I know I've been talking about this for quite some time, but I'm going to reach out to some of the people who follow us on Google Plus and see if they would like to be on the show in a Google Hangout next week. And I plan on doing the episode, uh, if all goes well, next Friday at 8 o'clock p.m., so if you're a Google Plus subscriber, if you've added Happy Camper Radio to Google Plus, to your Google Hangouts or to your Google account, whatever you want to call it, look for us and see if you get something, a uh, notification this week about being on the program. And you'll be here in the studio with me, and we'll be talking about camping. Anything in the world of camping you want to talk about is open game. So keep that in mind. If you already don't have a Google Plus account, you can get one for free. You can subscribe for free. Just make sure that you add Happy Camper Radio to your circles, and we'll be sure to add you back. This coming weekend, we have the Georgia RV and Camper Show coming once again to the North Atlanta Trade Center. If you live in the metro Atlanta area, in the Norcross area, make sure you take some time to visit the show. This weekend, like many weekends we've had here lately, 
The rain has just been keeping us down and keeping us indoors. Uh, we have been hit with some nasty rain this season. I don't know what that's all about. My yard looks like a swamp. I can't get out there. I can't do no yard work, and I definitely can't do any camping in this kind of weather. So if you're going to be home, if you're going to be indoors, rather than sit around the TV set, why not see if there's an RV and camper show somewhere near you? If you don't happen to live in the metro Atlanta area, check check your local guides, check your uh, newspapers, see if they have a program and a place where you can go check out some of the latest RVs, some motorhomes, uh, tent campers, pop-up campers, truck campers at the Georgia RV and Camper Show. They have it right there all under one roof. And one of the things I enjoy about going to the RV and Camper Show, even though I'm not an RV type of guy, I was at one time, but I missed my tent camping and had to go back to it. I do like to browse around. I like to look at some of the new models and the designs and all the new equipment that's coming out for 2016. I like to meet dealers, and more importantly, I just love to rub elbows with people who enjoy camping. And a lot of the people who do attend these trade shows come there for that purpose, to be around other fellow campers just like you. So if you have an RV and camper show coming somewhere in your vicinity, why not check it out and go visit it this weekend or any weekend that happens to be coming to your area. All right, folks, here's what we're going to talk about on today's show. It's all about camping versus comfort. When you go camping, do you make it a point to get yourself relaxed and make yourself as comfortable as you possibly can to enjoy the time at the campground or the forest, wherever you may be. I try to do that each and every time. Some people may frown upon the way other people camp. So what? The idea is to be relaxed. Nobody wants to go home exhausted. Sometimes when we're at home, relaxing in the comforts of our bed, we do enough tossing and turning right there. We don't need to do that at the campground because camping is a very relaxing type of activity. Now, I do a lot of camping, and I, of course, I do a lot of relaxing by the fire. I know I've bragged about this on a number of different occasions. I like to sit by the fire. When I was younger, I was out and about, and I did a lot of things. I did a lot of sightseeing. I did a lot of hiking. I took in attractions here and there, but I don't do that much anymore. I enjoy hanging around camp and just getting lazy. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's what camping is about. It's about relaxing and getting away. Do you enjoy nature? Do you enjoy the sights and sound that go along with it? Well, then you're probably one of those type of people that uh, enjoy camping too. All right. But it's more important too that when you bed down for the night, you make yourself as relaxed and comfortable as you possibly can be. Now, people do camp in many different ways. Some people camp in a tent. Some people camp in an RV, a pop-up camper, a fifth wheel, a travel trailer, a truck trailer. Some people sleep in hammocks. Some people sleep underneath the stars. The bottom line is, no matter how you do it, no matter how you get your rest for eight hours or more, and a lot of people do get their better rest when they're out in the forest, when they're in a camping environment, you want to get the best possible sleep you can. It doesn't matter how somebody else does it. How you do it and what you get out of it is the absolute most important thing. Let's talk about sleeping in an RV or motorhome, for example. If you're bedding down in an RV or a motorhome, your bed is already in place. Let's say you bought a brand new RV or motorhome. Let's say you bought an, a used RV or motorhome. Chances are there's going to be bedding already in place, but is that bedding going to be comfortable enough for you and your family to get you a peaceful night's sleep? I had a truck camper. I still have this truck camper. 
I am hopefully going to get it sold this year. That is one of my resolutions. That's one of my goals, folks. All right, I've had this sitting on the side of my house for the longest time. I want to say it hasn't been used in about three years. And that's because I have gone back to tent camping. I missed tent camping so much that the truck camper is just obsolete right now. It's just it's sitting there and it's not doing a thing. I do have some work I need to do on it, but I remember when I bought this truck camper and I didn't pay a whole lot a whole lot of money for it. Uh, for eleven thousand dollars at that time was a lot of money. I don't know, but I, I did get a pretty good deal. And it was brand new. It came right from the factory. And I had it custom built with the color scheme and designs that I wanted. It took about 30 days to arrive. And I remember looking at the showroom model. The bedding, which sits uh, above the cab in the truck. If you've seen a truck camper, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The bedding looked very, very comfortable. But one of the things I didn't realize till after the third or fourth trip out on the road, that this bedding was nothing more than a mattress pad. And if you're a big guy like me, and if you carry a lot of weight, and you do a lot of sleeping and some tossing and turning and doing what you can to make yourself comfortable, after a while, this mattress pad, which I would say is about five inches thick, is going to get down to about one inch thick. And next thing you know, you're going to be sleeping on a hard surface. I knew over time that I would have to switch that mattress out. I would have to get rid of that mattress pad and get something in there that was going to be more comfortable and suitable for my sleeping needs. So I went out and I bought a $300 queen-size mattress, and I got the best sleep I could possibly get anytime I went camping. Getting that new mattress in there was a chore, and I, I hope I don't ever have to get this old one out of there. I don't plan on it, but uh, that, that was a project. I did get the new one in there, and that's all that mattered. You may find yourself doing the same thing with a brand new or a used RV or motorhome or travel trailer or whatever you're camping in. The mattress pad may not be suitable for your personal needs and your personal comfort. So you may have to get something in there that's going to work for you. Nothing wrong with that. You want to get the best possible rest you possibly can. Now, if you're in an RV or a motorhome, chances are that's the type of camping you're used to doing. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Bottom line is, you're still out there, you're still enjoying nature, you're still coming out of your camper or your RV, and you're sitting by the fire, you're taking in everything that has to do with camping, just like anybody who may be camping in a tent. So you're still considered a camper, just because you may be sleeping differently and because you have some of the comforts that other people don't have, nothing wrong with that at all. If you're a bare bones camper, now let's talk about this for a moment, all right? Some people love sleeping beneath the stars. I've done it before on a number of different occasions. I can remember my very first camping trip with my dad in the backyard of our home in Allison Park, Pennsylvania. And we just went out there. It was a real nice summer night. We laid there out in the grass. We have got, you know, a, a, a mattress, I don't want to say a mattress pad, but we did have a blanket laid out there and our pillows. And we laid there and talked for a while and just looked up at the stars. That was my very first camping experience. Never will forget it. Some people do sleep beneath the stars. In some instances, some people will take along a large hammock and stretch it between two trees. And they will crash in that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Some will roll out a mattress pad or even a plastic sheet, something to put a barrier between yourself and your sleeping bag on the ground. That's so very important, especially in the mornings when there's a lot of condensation on the ground. You want to have something to protect your sleeping bag from getting wet and you getting wet as well. Uh, some people who do some bare bones camping, as we'll call it, might carry a small tent along with them. If you do the outdoor camping thing, if you do sleep outdoors, if you don't carry a tent and you love being outside 
And I, I get in those moods every now and then. Just remember to bring the bug spray with you, especially if you're camping in the spring or the summertime months. That's so important because the bugs will eat you alive. They show no mercy. They do not discriminate. They don't care who you are. They don't care why you're there. They don't care what you brought along with you. Remember to bring the bug spray and make sure it has DEET in it. All right, You can find uh, you know, a bug spray in just about any department store, and it's always good to carry a can or two with you in your camping supply box. Now, do you sleep on the ground surface? Not a terrific idea in the winter months. I've made this mistake before. There is nothing wrong with making mistakes. It's learning from them. Several years ago, when I went camping in the North Georgia mountains, one of my first or second trips up there, I'm going to go back a little more than 20 years now, when I didn't really have it all too well together, even though I enjoy camping, and even though I enjoy being out there, sometimes you don't come prepared. If you don't come prepared, be prepared to pay the consequences. One night, I slept on the ground inside my tent with no barrier whatsoever. I was sleeping on rocks. I laid my sleeping bag out. I climbed into it. And keep in mind, this was in the month of November. And you know what the temperatures are like in North Georgia in November? If you live in the south, uh, well, you know, it's, it's not like living in Florida. It's not like living in Hawaii. It's going to get cold. It's going to get mighty cold. And it was cold that weekend. But I didn't think about it at nighttime when I laid my head on the pillow and I climbed in the sleeping bag and I was laying on those rocks and I was rolling around very, very uncomfortably. Uh, I did get some sleep, not the sleep that I needed, but I got up every day and I had some fun. And come Sunday afternoon, I went on home. I unloaded my gear. I put it all away. And Monday morning when I woke up, I was calling in sick and I was down and out for the count for about a week. That's what can happen if you do not prepare yourself for winter's worst and you do something like sleep on the ground, on the rocks, with no mattress pad, you're not elevated. Yeah, that's going to happen. You're going to come down sick. So you want to keep off the ground if at all possible. Rain can also put a serious damper on your camping plans. I don't like to talk about rain, but, you know, you can't uh, ignore the inevitable. It's going to rain sometimes. It's going to snow sometimes. And if you make your camping plans several months in advance, it's going to be a toss of the coin whether or not the weather is going to cooperate with you. I've planned on camping trips before and had been out for a week. And the entire week, it did nothing but rain. It didn't stop me from going camping, but I certainly would have loved to have some better weather to be camping in. I would really hate to make camping plans, to be counting on going somewhere, somewhere special for an entire week and knowing it's coming up, watching the days on the calendar, counting them down, marking them off, only to have the day come when you're leaving and you're caught in a downpour and the weather is not going to cooperate with you. It does happen, folks, but that's part of life. That's part of camping life. Do you sleep on a cot? I do. This is one of the early lessons I've learned. Elevate yourself off the ground if at all possible. Cots come in of a number of different sizes, styles, and designs. Some unfold like a bed, and of course there are some that require assembly, like the one I own. Consider your own personal needs as well as the needs of your family. Your comfort is important, but so is theirs. Don't forget about your family. If you've got a wife and two kids or four kids, how many ever are in your family, and you're taking them camping, you're going to be responsible for their personal needs and personal comforts as well. Always consider quality. Buy something that is going to last, and consider your vehicle space too. If you're driving it around in a compact vehicle, and you're taking all this gear, you've got to consider... Your passenger space, you've got to consider storage space. Some people have containers that they carry on the roof of their vehicle. Some people pull along a haul trailer. Nothing wrong with that at all. But the more items that you add to your camping list and your supply list, 
These are more items that are going to be taking up space inside your vehicle. I've never had that problem because uh, chances are I was going to be a one-man show most of the time. My kids enjoyed camping when they were younger, but they're on their own right now. They're doing their own thing. And again, I am by myself, and I'm loving every minute of it. I usually do go camping with some friends, but I'm also making new friends wherever I go. I'm going to be in my truck, and I always will have plenty of space to haul things. If you've seen some of the photographs I've pasted on Facebook, you'll see the bed of my eight-foot truck is loaded. It is packed to capacity. I bring a lot of stuff, all right? But I also bring a cot to sleep on. My cot has a steel frame to it. It does require assembly. And it does have a 300 pound weight capacity. I'm a big guy. I'm six foot four and I carry my weight proportionately. And when I like getting up in the morning, I like sitting up just like I am at the edge of my bed at home. You'll find this as you get a lot older. Some people do climb in their tent and they lay on the ground and they have to get up and they have to lay down. And, you know, especially in the middle of the night when you've got to get up and use the facility, you've got to get up. You got to get on your knees. You got to stand up. You got to stretch. I do like having the ability to sit down at the edge of my cot, just like I were climbing out of bed at home. As you're getting older, you will find out you're going to be enjoying that type of uh, lifestyle just as much as I am. You want to elevate yourself to where it feels like you're 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 just climbing out of bed, and, you know. And again, like I says, I I can't talk enough about that. I have been sleeping on a cot for quite a few years now, and it's something again to think about as you get older. Right now, I am pushing sixty years old. I feel like I'm twenty five. Uh, as long as I continue to feel like that, I'm probably going to be camping. I'm probably going to be around for a good long time. So, you know, if you're looking to get yourself off the ground, consider buying a cot. You'll find many different styles and designs, uh, again, in your camping supply store. Your department store will carry some. But, again, quality is the key. Make sure that you buy something that is going to last and last for a good long time. Some people sleep on air mattresses. Nothing wrong with that at all. Air mattresses provide a great sleeping comfort. They're usually available in single, full, and queen sizes. I've had an air mattress before. I've never had it to go camping, though. I usually kept an air mattress at home in the event I had somebody come over and they needed a place to sleep, and I could bring out this queen-size air mattress, blow it up, and they would be sleeping just as comfortable as I would be in my very own bed. Air mattresses are relatively inexpensive. They inflate for the most part with a foot pump or a battery-operated air pump. Some are equipped with an air pump already built inside and an AC power cable. So all you got to do is plug it on, turn on the switch, and in about 60 seconds or more, your air mattress is completely inflated. Great to have if you're at a campground where you have electrical outlets available uh, these can be placed on the floor of your tent or, you know, in air or elevated. You can even buy a collapsible bed frame. Have you seen any of those before? Those are really neat. You just open them up. They open up like an accordion and you place your air mattress down on the inside of it, inflate it, and there's your bed. You can even find sleeping bags that will accommodate these air mattresses. Now, here's the downside. And I learned this at home and not, not out in the field where I was camping. Air mattresses can puncture very easily, and their leaks are extremely difficult to detect. They often require soapy water. You mean uh, bringing your air mattress outside of your tent on a hot, sunny day and spreading water and soap all over it, trying to find the, the air bubbles to come up? Yeah, that's what you do when you're finding a leak in an air mattress. So, you know, you don't want to have to be dealing with that at camp. And if you do bring an air mattress, if you do like sleeping, sleeping on an air mattress, by all means, make sure that you bring a repair kit with you because chances are somewhere along the line, a little pinhole, a little hole of some sort is going to develop on your air mattress. And if you're sleeping on it in the middle of the night, you may find yourself sleeping on the ground. Uh, like I said, they're great, but I don't think I would be using one at camp. All right, now let's talk about this, folks. Uh, we, a lot of people poke fun at this. 
glamping. Do you know what glamping is? I think most of us do. I don't personally poke fun at people who glamp, but anytime I see some pictures in a catalog online uh, where people are in a glamping type environment, I can I can do nothing but sit back and relax and 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 laugh about it. All right? It's a camping situation that I consider beyond ridiculous. Typically, it's an oversized tent with a fully loaded bedroom. It's got the furnishings, the carpeted floors, the electric lamps, all the comforts at home uh, not commonly seen at campgrounds. I don't personally know anybody who goes clamping. I can't envision anybody hauling all of this gear into a campground either. I've never seen it in person. I've seen the pictures, all right? But my attitude is, if you enjoy glamping, if that's the kind of thing you enjoy doing, then go stay in a hotel because you're going to get all of those environment, all those uh, accommodations right there. And you don't have to go through the trouble of bringing your bedroom furniture into camp. What kind of sleeping bag do you use? If you don't wintertime camp, uh, well, you know, don't waste your money. You can buy some good, really good sleeping bags that can get you through the winter. But, you know, consider the camping style that you enjoy and equip yourself accordingly. I am proud to say that I have been using the same sleeping bag for more than 20 years, and I've spent no more than 20 bucks on it. I bought it at our local Walmart store. Machine washable. It's held up for quite a few years, and I typically store it in a large plastic bag when it's not in use. I take it out of there, I roll it out, I put it on my cot, and I get a good night's sleep. Now, if you fall or wintertime camp where the temperatures are going to be a little bit bitter, your quality tent heater will add to that comfort. It will make up the difference. So in other words, you don't have to spend uh, an enormous amount of money on a sleeping bag that's going to get through you through the winter, especially if you're going to have a quality tent heater inside your tent. And also, I want to point out, too, nothing wrong with bringing a pillow from home. I do it all the time. However you decide to bed down, keep in mind relaxation is the key. Like at home, you want to treat yourself to the very best sleep possible. And that sleep is oh so very important. Because keep this in mind also, nobody, absolutely nobody, myself included, wants to go home exhausted. It's time now for our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Yep, yep. Talk to me. Yep. Folks, do you like to group camp? Some people do. If you're somebody like myself, yes, I like to be around a lot of friends. And if you camp with a party, your chances are you're going to be looking for someplace new to go camping. Well, if you by chance happen to visit the state of Oklahoma, consider Rock Creek Camp Group. Rock Creek Camp Group is the closest campground to Veterans Lake and is an ideal access point for fishing, hiking, mineral springs, and nearby Rock Creek. In the warmer temperatures, swimming opportunities abound with streams and springs dotting the park landscape. Now, the facility has one group site at Rock Creek, and it's open year-round. That's the neat thing about it. There are non-electrical sites that are designed for camping only, but small RVs can be accommodated as well. Some of the activities and amenities on their website include biking, boat ramp, uh, boating, a dump station, educational program, fishing dock, a campground host, horseback riding trail, some of the things to know before you go. They have an emergency number for the Sulphur Police Department. In the case of an emergency, no cell phone coverage is available in the campground area. Something else to keep in mind, too. Raccoons frequent the area. All food must be kept in approved containers. It's a great campsite to visit if you enjoy group camping, and it's available all year long. You'll find it on our webpage all week long. Just go to www.happycamperradio.com. Over on the right-hand side of the page, you'll see the button to the featured campground. It's Rock Creek Group, and it is our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. 
And of course, if you have a campground that you would like for us to feature on the program, by all means, get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com, and make sure you include a link to the campground website. Well, folks, that's about going to wrap things up for me, our first show of 2016. I'm looking forward to talking to you again next week for another edition of Happy Camper Radio. Remember, folks, every pet deserves a loving home. Do like I did. Visit your local shelter and adopt a pet today. You can catch us online anytime at www.happycamperradio.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker. Add us to circles on Google+. And now subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. The Happy Camper Radio Show is a presentation of Skip Huber Productions. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And no question about it, my friends. I'm going to do my very best to make a happy camper out of you. Catch you next week. This is Happy Camper Radio.